First of all, golden rule number one was not to mess around with the analog SR optical because that sounded so good. And the, the nature of film sound is that you can only release one type of print. Uh, because the way prints fall through from one screen to another in a complex and then goes from a first release house to a second release house, the distributors will have nothing to do in the long run with, with uh, prints that will only run in certain theatres. So that analog soundtrack had to always be there in order to ensure single inventory, as they call it. So we had to put digital data somewhere else on the film. So the first question was where? And uh, the nicest idea we thought would be to put the digital data in a horizontal strip between the frames. You know, there's 24 frames a second. And betwe between each frame, on a, on a normal widescreen picture, there is a little black strip, which is about, let um, me think, an eighth of an inch high. Good thing about it is that as the film comes through the picture gate, it slows down and stops for each particular flash of the shutter. And that would give you a chance to scan the data quite easily. The problem, though, would be that for cinemascope films, there is no frame line. So for 20% of the films, we'd actually have to change the shape of the picture to use that area. So we decided that was too much of a challenge to take on. So then we had to evaluate other areas on the film that might be viable. So to do that, we put a length of uh, black leader in films around the country. And I think at about 20 different theaters, including New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, um, between the trailers and the feature and let the film run for 100 plays, 200 plays, 300 plays, which is a pretty long run. And I think in one theatre we ran some stuff for 1,000 plays. Got those pieces of black leader back, use it to evaluate where there was the minimum print wear in, in the remaining space, which is between the sprockets and outside the sprocket holes. And not only where the print wear was less, but also to determine the shape and orientation of typical dirt. Does the dirt lie along the film? Or is it on a random basis? Is the dirt got, is it square or is it long? Is it hairs or is it dust? In order to determine whether, what size the bits should be, um, where the best place to put the bits is, whether the bits should be omlog, oblong, there's a school of thought that the bits should have been slightly more rectangular in order to protect against movement that's dragging things down the film. And then finally determine that the best space to, place to put the data was between the sprocket holes, which to many people seems like crazy, but it actually is pretty low print wear, and that the bits should be square. And then the final trade-off is the bit size versus the amount of compression you have to use. You could have very small bits and very low compression with a very high data rate, but you would suffer from print wear, and then you'd start losing bits and have more problems with, uh, with uh, failing data.